This was the first electric skateboard I've ever built, and also the first one I ever rode, or even saw in person. My first video on this channel goes over that build, probably in too much detail. I spent a good amount of time researching all the parts and trying to build what I thought would be the ultimate board for my goals. Then I built my second board, and really learned a lot. So here it is, my go-to electric skateboard. It's definitely not a perfect board, but it has the best trade-offs for me out of the boards I have now. This board isn't going to win any beauty contests. I tried to make up for it a bit with the scenic background. The grip tape is raggedy, the front and back wheels don't match, the sandwich containers are yet another non-matching color, but there are good reasons why I've been riding this board most. This board evolved through several corrections to my original board. My goal with this video is to share some of the improvements and lessons I learned along the way. After building my second board, the first thing that hit me was the bigger motors performed significantly better. I was expecting this board running at 6S voltage to be noticeably slower and weaker than the 8S board I previously built. But surprisingly that wasn't the case. The 6S board with the larger motors was faster on flat ground and uphill. I like the smaller wheels because they are closer to the size I was used to with a regular skateboard. But the reality is they just don't have enough power. They were noisier, got very hot, and not very fast. So that's when I upgraded to these 83mm motors, which were a big improvement. These will hit between 18 and 19 miles an hour and make it up most hills reasonably well. So now I'm going to do a speed test with the fish board that I built. I'm going to use my usual street that's pretty smooth and flat. So I'm at my usual hill. I'm here with the fish board that I put the 83 millimeter wheels on and I'm going to see how fast it goes up this hill. Right, full throttle. They're also pretty light for their size. They could use a bit more power though. Next was the battery. When I was planning my first build that I thought would be the ultimate board, I wanted the highest capacity batteries that would fit, so I went with these 6.6 .6 amp hour batteries. I wanted a super long range and interchangeable batteries so I can ride all day. It turned out that as much as I love riding electric skateboards, even 7 or 8 miles is a lot of riding in one shot. Especially on rough roads and sidewalks where I live. They unfortunately make the experience less fun sometimes. I found that for me it was better to find batteries that balanced capacity with more compact size and less weight. A quick note about batteries. People often ask me about the range of a board. A simple way to estimate the range, which I've noticed works very well, is to calculate the watt hours and divide by 10 to get the range in kilometers. The watt hours of a battery is the voltage multiplied by the capacity in amp hours. As an example, the batteries I'm running in this board totals 8S. It's two 4S batteries in series, and the capacity is 5.2 amp hours. 8S is approximately 32 volts, so this battery is 32 volts times 5.2 amp hours, which equals 166.4 watt hours. When you divide by 10, you get around 16.6 kilometers, which is 10.3 miles, which is about right for the range of this board. An important thing to note here is that range is related to both voltage and capacity. So going with a 6S 5 amp hour battery will roughly have an equivalent range to a 10S 3 amp hour battery. Now back to the board. These 4S 5.2 amp hour batteries still provide more than enough range and nicely fit into my usual sandwich containers, which are more secure and make it easier to swap batteries. And because they're so easy to swap, I can just throw an extra set in my backpack for extra long rides. Although most of the time, the 10 plus miles I get off a single set is more than enough. Also, the smaller batteries help shave some weight off the board. With batteries, I don't think bigger is always better, and your choice should depend on how you use your board. It's best to size the battery to the way you'll most often ride. If you mostly ride short distances and carry the board often, like between public transit stops or around the neighborhood, then a smaller, lighter battery will probably be best. 
If you mostly commute long distances, then having a bigger battery on the board will probably be better, so you won't have to carry additional batteries or stop along the way to swap them. Securing the battery well was one of the lessons I really learned the hard way. I originally used weak velcro designed for cable ties, and eventually the battery fell down when I was riding on a rough sidewalk. I don't know, the battery could have fallen down and got pushed into the ESC and just cracked everything. The remote was in my hand and just like went right into the pavement. My guess is that the velcro just popped right off. It's bad Velcro. So this method might be okay, but you just have to be really careful to use strong Velcro. I guess it just got too smoothed over in certain places. Surprisingly, neither battery caught fire. I think RC batteries are built pretty tough, but I'm definitely not using these anymore. The sandwich containers have done a great job so far at keeping the battery safe and secure. Getting back to the weight, this board weighs in at just 12.7 pounds. That's considerably lighter than any of my other boards. That's mostly thanks to the light motors and trucks, along with not going crazy on the battery capacity. As a comparison, the Blink S2 weighs in at almost 16 pounds, and according to the specs, a boosted board is around 15 pounds. For the electronics, I stuck with using the original Vesks I had. They work well and are super configurable. Although if I were starting over, I'd strongly consider just going with the cheaper dual ESC like I used in the longboard build. It's not easy deciding between the flexibility of the Vesks and the simplicity and low cost of the budget ESC. The only thing the Vesks are missing is a power switch. This leads me to another modification that's been working well for me. High current electric skateboard switches were all expensive, and loop keys are annoying the mount and plug in and out, so I just went to Home Depot and got the biggest switch I can find. This is a 20 amp toggle switch. It's not rated for DC, but it's been working well so far and only cost me $4.49. It's a single pole, single throw switch that I ran in line with one of the power wires. I actually prefer this mechanical switch to an electronic one because I like knowing that the battery is physically disconnected when I turn it off. I made sure the on position was in the backwards direction so that brushing up against something while riding wouldn't turn the board off. Getting back to what I was saying before about the ESC choice, Unless you really like having detailed control over the ESC or want to experiment with different voltages or something like that, I find it difficult to justify the extra cost, complexity, and work needed to set up and install the VESCs. Finally, there's the deck. This 32-inch deck has a small nose allowing for a long wheelbase in a standard size. It's comfortably wide and has just a bit of flex to give a smoother ride. It also has a decent kicktail, which makes turning much easier. I really miss it after riding a longboard. For the grip tape I went with the non-abrasive grip tape like I used in the longboard build. I actually used it on this board first. The main issue is the piece that DKL sells isn't wide enough, so I cut it into smaller horizontal strips. That makes this board look especially raggedy, because now there are more edges that tend to peel back. Hopefully DKL or some other company will make non-abrasive grip tape that stays on better. This board is kind of a step up from the original board, so I cut a step function into the grip tape. So in summary, overall the things that draw me most to this board are the size, the kicktail, the grip tape, having a power switch, how easily I can take the batteries in and out for charging and swapping, and very importantly, how comparatively light this board is. It is a bit rough around the edges. One of the wheels makes a clicking noise when I'm riding, and it's not the fastest or most powerful. However, the positive things still make it my choice out of the boards I currently have. There is definitely room for improvement though. These motors are light, but they do struggle a bit on steep hills and tend to heat up. After riding my 10S longboard with the 90 millimeter motors, it does make me think twice about an upgrade. I'm not sure I'd recommend the motors I'm using on this board because in my experience, they only support up to 8S voltage. I tried running them at 10S using the Vesks and one of the motors burnt out after just a few minutes. They might work okay using the cheaper dual ESCs or if I adjust the Vesk settings to reduce the max motor current. I haven't tried though. I took it apart to see how it was built. You'd need to be careful when changing the rubber because the motor is kind of difficult to put back together once you open it. Which along with the rubber getting loose is why some motors like the 90mm ones used in my longboard build are not meant to be replaced. The first thing on my upgrade list is to keep an eye out for my next motors. 
Maybe someday someone will make some super light titanium motors with copper heat sinks or something like that, but then they'd probably cost a fortune. As you can probably tell, this is not the board I'd recommend to most people. I think something similar to my longboard build would generally be better. The motors, ESC, and 10S batteries in that build are a good combination. Hopefully my experience and evolution with this board was helpful when considering some of the design choices of your build. As always, I'll have links in the description to the parts I used in this board, along with the other parts I talked about. Please leave any comments with questions or sharing your experience. I know I haven't posted in a while because I've been a bit distracted with a very big house project, but I'll get more out soon. Thanks for watching.